rooting around her mom's bathroom for a pregnancy trust. You know that whore is going to have one somewhere. I'm surprised they didn't have a fucking Sam's Club multi-pack thing that she went <laughs> to or whatever. Spencer on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I actually have a pregnancy test dispenser in my house, and so I, I feel I feel that you know I feel that. It's, in fact, we don't call them pregnancy scares in my house. We call them abortion scares because yes. you know, we're liberal Satanists. It's cheap. Tenth one free. So yeah. anyway, god awful movie movie movie. Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because we clearly hate ourselves more than we love one another. I'm your host, No Illusions. Unfortunately, Heath will be unable to join us again this week, but sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm fantastic, Noah. <laughs> 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 you got to have to gotta know what mood we're supposed to be in right now. Thank you, Eli. <laughs> and also joining us tonight is a special guest masochist. She's the host of the Mueller She Wrote podcast and the co-host of the new post-Trump era podcast cleanup on aisle 45 AG. AG, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you so much, and I hate you for making me watch that. Right, <laughs> right, yeah, like, we have very few return guests, is the thing, that's what we're always on the lookout for new people who haven't listened to our show before. Okay, so, so, AG, tell us, what will we be breaking down today? Well, we watched Order of Rights. It's the story of a 30-year-old high school student suing mm -hmm. for joint custody <laughs> of his high school girlfriend's internal organs. <laughs> Terrifyingly accurate. And Eli, <laughs> how bad was this movie? Well, if you love hashtag couple goals, hashtag power couple, but you also love the literal enslavement of women, <laughs> you will love Woo. this movie. It's the Handmaid's Instagram story, everybody. <laughs> we found it. <laughs> so... All right, so before we dive into the movie itself, I just want to like add this little sad fact about myself. Before we started, I saw that this movie had Ben Davies in it. And mm -hmm. like, you know, Ben Davies, who normal humans will remember from nothing whatsoever in <laughs> all of their lives. But we've now seen this guy in Overcomer, I'm Not Ashamed, War Room, Rumors of Wars, and Courageous. This is our sixth Ben Davies vehicle. Mm. More terrifying, I saw Emma, the one who plays the girl, and I was like, oh, she's from the anti-abortion yep, yes. movie and the Columbine movie if we I'm watched. not ashamed. And yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh-huh. All right. So this is normally where we do our best worsts. Like I will give you an example, AG, how this works. I'd like to nominate this movie for best worst, as you've already alluded to. Teenagers. <laughs> All right. So Ben Davies, the male lead, is supposed to be a high school student. He's supposed to be a high school football player. Okay. We first saw this guy in a movie that came out in 2011 where he played a cop. <laughs> okay. This movie came out last year. It just reminds me of Hello, Fellow Kids, you know? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> My wife fixated on their ages because Anna has co-watched or watched a bunch of these movies with me, but she just kept being like, why are they in a high school? Who's the parent in this conversation? Is that right. the mom or the daughter? <laughs> <laughs> well, if I had to pick a best worst for this, I would have to go with best worst edits. <laughs> there was specifically a scene I should say, scenes that within the the scope of about 20 seconds, they cut to, faded, came into a new scene, delivered a line, cut to, faded, <laughs> came into a new scene, delivered a line. Like, they just don't understand how to move a script forward. And I can't help but think, you know, we'll get into it, but that first scene when she's riding on the bus and we're wondering what she's thinking, we'll talk about that. But I have some ideas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those bizarre, like, you know, they, they keep like going into slow motion and then everything fades to black. And she's just like, just, just stop, okay? <laughs> Do a fucking star wipe if you're going to get fancy, okay? I was going to say, you can translate whoever wrote this script's thoughts because they they do a blackout whenever he said, and then? <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is like when I was very young and would go to this garbage strip joint and be like, I could be a stripper, and I really couldn't, but I'm watching this movie thinking I could make movies. <laughs> right, yes, exactly. <laughs> 
And I'm going to go with best worst closing arguments. <laughs> and, and, and that's a lot. We, we have watched a movie where the closing arguments were, you're all in hell and I'm the devil. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the closing arguments to this movie about abortion do not rise to the level of homo says what. <laughs> it's, it's, so, it's, just, it's, a, it's a Facebook rant. The whole thing culminates in a Facebook rant. Mm. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> this movie is going to go so low. We need a minute to depressurize so that we don't get the fucking bends. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll dive into all the unapologetic misogyny that is the order of rights. Right, right. Hey, podcast listener, I'm No Illusions. And I'm Eli Bosnick. You know, with Valentine's Day just around the corner and the pandemic still running across most of the United States, it could be hard to figure out Valentine's Day plans. Hard to have a romantic dinner in a hazmat suit, after all. You said it, Noah. But there's one Valentine's Day gift that's COVID safe and requires no reservations. Fuck stuff. That's right, fuck stuff. And there's no better place to get your fuck stuff than adamandeve.com. Be it outfit stuff, toy stuff, tying each other up stuff, or butt stuff, Adam and Eve has you covered. Or uncovered. Check this out. When you go to adamandeve.com and select almost any one item, you'll get it at 50% off. That's amazing by itself, but here's where they start loading on all the free stuff. That's right. First, for your viewing pleasure, six free movies. Uh, that'd be pornographic movies, to be fair. Movie stuff. Next, a free mystery pack that includes a toy for each of you and something you can use together. Plus, free shipping. Now that's a lot of free Valentine's stuff. So head on over to adamandeve.com and be sure to use our code AWFUL. Again, that's A-W-F-U-L, AWFUL, because without it, there will be no free Valentine's stuff. That's AWFUL at adamandeve.com. Fuck stuff. It's the gift that keeps on giving. But you might need, like, some Gatorade. Fair. Yeah, baking powder mm -hmm. occasionally. Gee, Becky, thanks so much for reading our script for The Order of Rights. Yeah, we really wanted a girl's opinion. I mean, a girl who isn't our mom. Well, yeah, exactly. Uh, no problem, guys. Uh, so I guess my first question is, why Emily? Mm, what do you mean, Becky? Well, you're making a pro-life film. I guess if I wanted to make a sympathetic argument for pro-life... I'd have Emily be wealthy and an adult, so there isn't any question on whether or not she can support her baby. Mm, mm. Right, but but most young women who get abortions can't support a baby, though. Yeah, and, and they are young. That's yeah. statistically. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, but do you guys care about that stuff? No. We actively do not, aggressively. <laughs> so why not make your position as sympathetic as possible? I don't understand. Is this a girl thing? Oh, okay. Pin that. How about the boyfriend? Maybe instead of making him a jerk who walks away once he's slept with her, he could really be supportive and want to marry her. Uh, yeah. Or maybe they could recommend adoption more strongly? Yeah, surprisingly, we are against that too in our movie. Uh, yeah, you are. Okay, how about the wood chipper? W Woody? Yeah, Woody the wood chipper, who's going to, quote, mulch her baby the second it comes out of her anyway, unquote. It kind of seems to make the abortion argument pointless, unless the point of the movie is just forcing women to give birth, like, if that's literally all you care about. I, I mean... It, it, it is. It is. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, then it's perfect. I knew it. Mom said it was perfect. She did. Hey, Becky, one last question. Yeah? Are we married now? No, Steve, we're not married now. Beans. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up on an excerpt from Roe versus Wade that basically boils down to like, wow, if a fetus was human, the answer to this would be super obvious, and the, and the answer isn't super obvious. So. <laughs> And what I love is I actually Googled this. The dialogue that they play is, if a fetus was a baby, your case is totally lost. Yes, hard click. But yeah. the, what the answer is, <laughs> yes, but it's fucking not. Wait. And then the, the guy who asked that question is like, oh, yeah, no, it's fucking not. No, I mean, this is very super I not. Just, I just wanted to give a movie in the year 2020 something to take out of context. <laughs> and, then, and then we like fade from that to the 14th goddamn amendment. Right. And it's just like, yes, the rights of fetuses is the main takeaway from the 14th Amendment, guys. Well done. Well done. <laughs> yeah. Way to cherry pick the Constitution. N no pun intended. 
<laughs> and I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Hey, Christian movie in 2020. Not everyone buying your movie is going to be on board with the 14th Amendment. <laughs> I know your audience. I'm <laughs> better than you. All right. So we get a, a drone shot of a gray, shitty New England town. And we see this chick on a, on a school bus heading home. Now, she is so too old to be on a school bus. But like my mind is trying to explain, OK, is she is she the sister of the school bus driver and just catching a ride with her or what? But she's supposed to be school aged, apparently. <laughs> and they didn't get other kids on the bus because they couldn't afford a bus full of 45 year olds. <laughs> so she's on the bus by herself. Yeah. Yeah, I, know. I thought maybe she was the director wondering where the script was. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the uh, I don't think the director ever bothered to wonder that actually yeah so and then by the way because she's so goddamn too old to be a high school student after she gets off the school bus she goes into this shop and a woman turns to her and says Emma are you just getting home from school you school aged teenager <laughs> <laughs> that lady had the worst read in the history of reads I think I've ever oh, seen it's so bad. So, and then we meet Emma's mom, who is also a GAM regular. Yeah. I didn't bother to write out every movie, but we've seen her in several of these as well. And mom owns an art gallery. That's, and I think like that never matters, but I think that's just supposed to be like one of the dumb things a stupid feminist would do. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And by the way, this is a fantastic Chekhov's gun that's going to go off in the best possible way. <laughs> I'm so excited for you to share in the experience that is Christian art. Yeah, <laughs> I'm so surprised. She, she, like, part of the script wasn't just like, "Oh, well, hello, daughter. Come see the art that we have this week." I just got back from a protest from Black Lives Matter. Yeah, you know, like <laughs> something else to develop that she's the evil liberal art loving witch <laughs> that they end up making apparent within the first ten minutes of the film. Yeah, and every time we see her, she's going to double down on that in another silly ass way. Yeah, <laughs> but then with like her first, like one of her first things is this: "Well, I'm way too busy." to cook dinner for my daughter. I'm sure you can handle something when you get home there, right, honey? <laughs> yeah, the Emma goes, you guys look busy. You're pointing at a clipboard and everything, so I just assume. <laughs> <laughs> just, you don't have time for me, do you, Mom? I sure don't, hon. I'm a career woman. Yeah, and I think they tried to drive home that single mom thing pretty hard, too. Yeah, exactly. So, okay, so Emma takes her latch key and goes home, and we get her making <laughs> dinner, and I just, I, I know this is very minor, but she is cutting those potatoes like she's mad at her fingers and she wants to give them a good fright. <laughs> yeah, I wrote in my notes. Now she's making herself a delicious dinner of sweet potato slices. She's boiling them. She's added butter to the water. What the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was thinking the actress could have at least YouTube some knife skills. Right. <laughs> before she headed into this scene. Oh, God. I, can't, I, I have trouble watching anybody cut with a knife to begin with without wincing. But yeah, when they're doing it like this, she might, it's like fruit ninja up in this fucking kitchen. So that we get her like she's doing her homework to some shitty Christian music. She's playing a ukulele. I bet Anna loved that. <laughs> And then, and then we get the next morning. So, OK, yeah, right. Just in case we didn't catch that mom was a terrible, evil, liberal lady. The next morning, we see that the artist that she was chatting with at the art gallery is walking out of her bedroom with his pants on backwards and his hair all messed <laughs> up. <you know? laughs> yeah, she's driving her to school and she's like, what happened to Paul? And mom's like, monogamy is slavery, Emma. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> she's... <laughs> Well, and mom's like, you know, I, I was just thinking about it the other day. We should probably get you on birth control. And the daughter's like, why? And she's like, because you're 32. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you're almost perimenopausal. We should regulate your periods. <laughs> but she doesn't want to think about her front butt. Yeah. Exactly. Also, <laughs> if she said yes, this movie wouldn't exist. Right. The fact that this movie doesn't seem to know. Yeah. Like this movie, it's I felt like this movie made an accidental argument for contraception and then they like had a prayer circle to apologize for it and just kept <laughs> the scene in the film. All right. And so now it, the end is so weird that they never pull the fucking trigger on this. We, we get this this school play that's going on. Right. Um, that's a subplot of this. We've got this like angry director that's always bitching at him. But like the play just disappears and the movie forgets about it at a certain point. 
I literally didn't remember that they never come back to this play until you mentioned it just now. And it's my favorite thing in the universe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was thinking. And then they were talking about the director, Solandro, the great and powerful Solandro. I'm like, maybe the director could take some notes <laughs> of this film from Mr. Sol- like, how much, how different would this movie be if Mr. Solandro directed it? And also, I was loving the segues in this scene. <laughs> the dorky kid's like, I'm going to take notes. I'm going to be a comedian in my comedy notebook. Speaking of comedy, he wants to direct Shakespeare. Oh, yeah. Speaking of Shakespeare, my mom wants me to activate sexually. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just like, it's, like, where are you going? It's so stilted. And nothing makes sense. Yeah. The conversations in this movie are amazing. What's even more amazing is when the movie just gives up and it's just like, you know, you can see they're talking in the background there. <laughs> but yeah, so we're meeting Emma and her friend Stacy. Her friend Stacy will randomly get a name an hour from now. But and Stacy's like, Emma, are you thinking about your uterus? And she's like, I sure am. I wish she's like, my mom wants me to fuck. And she's like, I wish my mom wanted me to fuck. <laughs> and that's that scene. That's that scene. Yeah. And again, like the movie walks right up to the ledge of, gosh, there sure won't be a rest of the movie if you say yes right now to the totally normal request for you to get on birth control as a teenager. She's like, there sure <laughs> won't, Stacy. Shut the fuck up. Yep. <laughs> Star wipe. Star wipe. <laughs> All right, and so now we're going to meet our male love interest, and I know that he's the male love interest because I know who Ben fucking Davies is, but (laughs) the rest of everybody else watching knows because we meet him bicep first, right? (laughs) (laughs) He's the star football thrower at the the high school. Yes, they are at uh, touch football practice. (laughs) (laughs) So... I love the like series of ever more generic coach words we get as the segue from this scene. Oh, mm. this coach is fantastic. Yeah, I personally love his uh, no mental mistakes line. But when he's standing in front of a group of 40 mental mistakes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and then he says, keep pounding. And, and my first note here is, is Ethan 30? Like, I'm new to these films. He's pretty fucking I'm new to 30. these films. Yeah. So... Y'all like, okay, crow's feet on the football, <laughs> touch football field. It should be the name of this film. Crow's feet on the touch football field. Oh, fantastic. Yes. And so, and the coach is like, all right, now we got the big game coming up. Probably we're going to forget that like we do the play, but we got the big <laughs> game coming up. So stay away from all of them, you know, fucking fertile girls out there, you know? You know how they'll get you. <laughs> yeah, that's the first advice. And and then, so everybody goes to hit the showers and the coach is like, Ethan, you're the male lead. I need to talk to you extra. <laughs> 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 yes, he, he says, your new footwork is working. We need your help and God's, the God of the Bible, just to be clear. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So he gets his Jesus speech. Him and his buddy, we meet his buddy Tommy, and they notice the female lead, right? And he's like, hey, man, check out that girl. And it's like, is one of you new to this high school? How big is this school? You would just know each other. What You'd be like, yeah, that's Emma. Her mom owns the art gallery. She's in the play. <laughs> yeah, <that's> exactly. <laughs> Tommy appears to be new to the female species of human. <laughs> I don't yes. think species is the right term there, but yes. <laughs> yes, Very exactly. True. What do I know? I'm just a mental mistake. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we've got to meet Ethan's family right now. I went on about this for so long in my notes and I probably shouldn't have because we're supposed to meet the dorky little brother saying science words, right? <laughs> but the science words they give him is he's like, hey, mom, did you know that an atom is? And then he just defines the word atom, mm-hmm. right? Like it would be like, hey, man, did you know that a square is a plain figure with four equal sides and four right angles? Like, why would you? What? It, so, yeah, that's how lazy this was done. They couldn't even think of a science thing for the kid to know. Well, to be fair, the mom didn't actually know what the definition of an atom was. That's true. No, she did not. (laughs) She's like, a what now? The kid is like, I got to explain to God mom here what the fucking atom is. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, if this was all him building up to the so evolution is definitely real thing. We just didn't get there. Then I love this kid. (laughs) That's 
I thought this kid was going to come. By the way, he will be abandoned like, oh, so many of the plots in this movie. But like, I thought that's what this was going to come back to is they were going to talk about abortion. And he was going to be like, mister, look in this biology textbook. Don't you see how a fetus is actually just a little man in a fur coat? And they'd be like, oh, my God, case dismissed. But no, this kid's going to be like, an atom is defined as blah, blah, blah. His parents will be like, boo, nerd. And then he will never appear in the <laughs> fucking right. movie again. <laughs> they so could have worked science into this because every pro-life movie probably needs a science nod, right? Yeah. So they could be like, we're not totally crazy, but then boom, left turn. Didn't God create atoms? Like, oh God, jeez. Well, and I think that was the movie backing away from it a little bit. Like, we don't want everybody to think he's a total science kid. We don't want him to be an atheist, right? Like, we, No, we just want him to know sympathy. the literal definition of an atom yeah. and then it ends there. <laughs> exactly. And then he can be religious again. Mm -mm. All right. <laughs> so now we cut to the pep rally. Now, I, I have to point this out, too, even though it's entirely meaningless. The fact that it's so meaningless is the reason that I have to point it out. Before we <laughs> cut to the pep rally scene, we have a scene where Ethan is leaving for school. His dad calls him over to the car and says, hey, Ethan, make sure you give these papers to your coach. He left them at the prayer meeting at church last night. And he's like, OK. There will never be a we will never see those papers again. <laughs> the relationship between the dad and the coach will never be explored or matter in any fucking way. This scene existed because I guess the dad was like, shouldn't I have a scene in the first third? Can we guess? Because apparently here is what I think happened. They had a plot point here or something that they needed to develop. And that plot point got cut out of the end of the movie, but they didn't watch the rest of it to cut out everything that had to do with that plot point. What could it have possibly been <laughs> in the context of this film? I think at the end, we should revisit this and say, now now that you know the entirety of the script of this movie, what was the paperwork that he was supposed to give to Coach? I have to know. All right, I have a theory on this, and my theory involves you having overestimated this of these movie papers, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> So, but we'll get to it. We'll get to it. All right. So, so, but then we have to go to the pep rally. Oh, I love this, by the way. This is where we learn that Ethan's last name, in keeping with the tradition of Christian movies with really dumb fucking acronyms for their characters, is Carpenter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ethan Carpenter. Oh, that explains why Emma's character's full name is Emma Horson. I, I didn't get it for a while. <laughs> no, Isn't yeah. her last name Stein? <laughs> it's a uh, it's Emma Magdalene. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so they're introducing Ethan Carpenter at the uh, pep rally. They're like the man who has the most touchdowns of any quarterback in school history. And I'm like, well, he's in his 30s. He's been your quarterback <laughs> for like 14 years. <laughs> so, no, I hearken back to that moment in Better Off Dead where he's like, I've been going to this school for seven and a half years. I'm no dummy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God, I love that. But you just made me want to snort some snow. All right. <laughs> but yeah, so everybody loves Ethan. We learned that. And then we see Emma leaving and Tommy, the friend that's new to the female species, is going to follow her down and hit her on the head and drag her back to his cave. OK, <laughs> this is so vital because... I think this movie just thinks like, oh, Tommy, you dog, instead of, wow, Tommy's a dangerous rapist. Mm. Yeah, Tommy is the reason women hold their keys in their fists like claws. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, and this is one of those great examples of weird, just really nonsensical dialogue, right? Because... Tommy's like, what are you doing? She's like, taking photos. They don't see anything to take a photo. And then that, oh, how about take a photo of me? And she's like, you need to leave, you know, doing a normal kind of a thing. Like, you're creeping me out. You need to leave. Then in comes our hero, our carpenter. But she's immediately cool with him. It's just yep. the weirdest thing. Like, whoa, like just slam left turn. That happens so often in this film. Right. So, so keep in mind that here's the shift that we go from. She's walking down the tracks and some creepy dude shows up and gets like super rapey. Like, right. Like, like that's definitely the implication is no, I'm going to rape you now. There's no one else around. Suddenly this other guy shows up, tells him to leave. And then she's alone with this other guy that just told him to leave. And she's entirely comfortable and asks if he'd like to go get a coffee with her. Yeah, literally the lines go, are you okay? No, very reasonable response. 
I like coffee. <laughs> she, <laughs> that's a reasonable response. And then they cut to, it looks like they're in a bar, but I guess you don't need ID when you have crow's feet. <laughs> <laughs> and also, mega sax solo St. Elmo's fire style in this oh, bar, and wow. I love it. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. So now they have this conversation. Now, this is another thing that we see a lot in Christian movies. These writers don't know what a conversation would sound like about what, between two people who are like interested in one another's thoughts. So we <laughs> zoom out and we do a montage, right? We can see that they're talking and we hear little snippets of their conversation where she's like, and then he said, and then it just fades away and the camera pans <laughs> over them from a different angle or something like that. Yeah, they literally can't write the dialogue, so no. they just... Nope. Oh, well, yeah, it, it's absolutely bonkers. I've never seen anything like it. And usually Christian movies are smart enough not to give us the snippets of the dialogue, but the <laughs> snippets of the dialogue here are deliciously insane. <laughs> it's like, and so I said, 40 pieces of silver? Come on! And <laughs> You can make them into a stew if they're the right race. <laughs> And then we we played out in, from this conversation where I'm just like, imagine how boring the shit he actually wrote was when they decided to do this. And we come out of it and we find out exactly how boring the shit he wrote was because she her line as the montage portion ends is, I really like English class, but I don't like math class much at all. <laughs> I will kill myself, movie. I will kill myself. I made it 33 years through this planet without having to have this conversation with someone. You can't make me have it now. Uh. All right, so but we set up here that he's very good at trigonometry and he's going to help her study trick. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, he's been he's been working on it for ten years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. He's no. Doctor. I'm technically the trigonometry teacher too. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So mom's drop. We get Emma's mom, Emma's feminist mom, dropping her off at Ethan's place, going like, "Well, I sure hope you get some dick out of this, honey. Have fun." And I just a little note, like, "Hey, movie. I know it's an abortion movie about abortion, but you're supposed to act happy at this point in the film, but the actors don't know that." So she's like. I guess here I am dropping you off at your trigonometry study session. <laughs> yes, mother. I'll see you after I'm done studying yes. trigonometry. <laughs> kind of surprised they didn't throw in another, like she says under her breath, I wish she would have said yes to that birth control. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Yeah, well, this movie's too subtle for that. I don't know if you noticed, H.E., how subtle this movie was. So. You know what trigonometry leads to every time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, so they're downstairs trigging hard. I love he's got his baseball cap backwards here, so he's not 34 anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, it makes him look older. Right, right. So yeah, exactly. much older. And so, okay, so, and then this, the trigonometry becomes a montage of they've dated for a while now, so that, and, and of course, this has to happen in the movie because otherwise this audience, the audience that they're intending would have no sympathy for either of these characters if they had sex, right? Right. <laughs> like they have to have been together for at least a while. Then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, the, the math music... <laughs> is like I don't know who consulted on this film. They could have used something like that war games computer, like ding 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 ding. Something like mathematical, but no, it's not at all. It's it, it is not the music I would put into a math montage if you know if I ever had a math montage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you probably would have just skipped the goddamn math montage if you were making the film. <laughs> well, and they're so bad at the math montage. They don't know how to fade it into snuggling. So it's literally like, you see, this is a triangle to cuddling on the couch. So, yeah. So I wrote in my notes, I didn't snuggle nearly this much with my trig tutor. Maybe that's why I didn't do well. <laughs> so, well, and of course, then this montage ends with that. They're walking down the street and she sees a little teddy bear in the window. We don't know that it's a teddy bear for a bizarrely long time. But anyway, so she sees a little teddy bear in the window and she's like, I've always wanted a teddy bear. My mom wouldn't buy them for me because she's a feminist and feminists mm. hate teddy bears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, and it's they even use the term 
non-gender specific toys and yeah. I, and and I'm sitting here thinking every I see tons of little boys in movies with teddy bears I don't get how a stuffed animal is a gender specific toy <laughs> to begin with but then I love that he's going to rescue her from the non-gender specific toy drought yes she's been yes. having <laughs> now that she's in her 30s well, <laughs> eventually he spends 26 minutes in this scene being like oh that's too bad Oh, you want a bear? Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah no, right, right. <laughs> well, like, after she says, well, you know, if I would be way more likely to give you a hand job later if you bought me this teddy. Oh, right, buy you a teddy bear. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I also love the idea that her mom's solution to not wanting to do gender specific toys was to like refuse to buy her the girly shit, right? Not to encourage her to also own the boy toy type stuff, but to refuse to let her have a doll. Fuck her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, a teddy bear. Yeah. Named after. Theodore Roosevelt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> girl toy. Exactly. You know, that girly Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> he was so feminine. Little girls <laughs> love the Spanish War. <laughs> <laughs> Rough Riders? Are you kidding? Yeah. Oh. oh that, well, maybe, maybe you get her a Bowie knife instead. <laughs> you know? <laughs> All right, so yeah, so she gets a 97 on her math test and they're going to celebrate together. So we have to have this montage of people who are all, like all worried about how distracted he is by this, you know, harlot that he's seeing now, right? So we see Coach <laughs> in the background going like, mm, disapproving. He's seen a girl. Now he'll never throw a football well again. <laughs> he brings it up in the best way later on. Yeah, we'll go over so that. Good. he really does. <laughs> and then we see Ethan's parents, and they're talking about like, mm, I don't know about this relationship. He's going to discover his penis any minute now. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to make his way past the complex series of locks we put on it, darling. <laughs> <laughs> When we are here in the kitchen with Eva's parents, the first thing it's driving me bananas is he's trying to use two spoons to pull spaghetti out of a boiling pot of water. And I'm like, can I buy these people a spaghetti? Emma can't use a knife. Dad can't use a spoon. Cutlery deficiencies run in the family, right? apparently. Yes. But that <laughs> drove me crazy. The subplot of this movie is that no one knows how to use a utensil. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they're not in the same family. I'm sorry. And, and you know why? Because the moms in this film are identical twins. Yes. Identical human beings. Thank you, HG. <laughs> why did they get two such similar looking Karens for those two? At least give one of them a brunette wig. <laughs> right? Yeah. Or have that brunette, the bad read from the art gallery, be one of the moms. But yeah, it's, Anybody. Not, it's not like it. It's not like there was acting talent to go around. It didn't matter who you swapped in or out. Have the science-loving little brother play one of the moms. Anything to differentiate these women. <laughs> well, and honestly, it's not like that would make the ages even more hard to believe. Yeah, right? They, they meet later in the movie. We're going to talk about it. It was like the mirror scene from Game of Death. I expect one of them to put claws on and start smashing mirrors. Yeah, I was having a big business flashback with Lily Tomlin and Bette Midler in that, in that scene. <laughs> All right, so yeah, so we cut to Ethan and Emma having a date. We get another music playing over the conversation because the writer doesn't know what liking each other sounds like. Mm -hmm. And then Ethan takes Emma back to her place, and wouldn't you know it, her liberal mom has left for the night. Mm. <gasps> I didn't think about that. What an irresponsible liberal mom. Right? Mm. Right. So they're sitting at the house, and, and Ethan's like, well, I should go, and she's like, or you could stay, and fuck me. We could fuck or if you wanted to do that. And he's like, no, I'm too Christian. She's like, no, please. And she's like, all right, I'll let you have some tea. <laughs> all right, fine. But I think we can all agree that in a movie about abortion, we should establish that this is your fault. Oh, yeah, for sure. My fault. My fault. <laughs> then I really had to talk you into it. and You didn't want to do it. <sighs> yeah, and I love how he's like, it's so dark in your home. And I think that they, that they had to put that in there because they couldn't actually afford to light this scene. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and this was the first time I had a note about your past worst, AG, where I'm like, the way they're blacking out between these scenes is fucking nuts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, so the two of them fuck, we assume, right? Because there's just a blackout. And then we see him like feeling real bad about it later. Oh right. my god, he he fucking crying games in the car afterwards. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. Right. If if this were any other movie or any other genre, 
the only assumption I could have made was that he had murdered her mid fuck. Right? If you're watching this on HBO where it's not made by Christians, you're like, oh yeah, he fucking murdered her. He murdered her. Right. Yeah. It was like Cameron Fry, you know, having his existential <laughs> yeah. crisis about exactly. Bueller going over to Bueller's house. I'll go. I'll go. What? I'll go. Oh, uh, you know, it. It was just abs- Like. Wow, it was okay. It was so sad and upset. I've never seen anyone act like this. I have to point that out that we've already gotten from you, and this is just the first third of the show, y'all. We've already gotten a Ferris Bueller's Day Off reference, a Better Off Dead reference, and a War Game reference. You, this is the key to my fucking heart, Ag. I just want to let you know. <laughs> Not that you want to come back on our show, but you're always welcome. Ag, <laughs> yeah. are you Noah in a voice modulator? You have to tell us. You have to tell us. It's like being a cop. All right. So, uh, <laughs> all right. So, yeah, I, I wrote my notes. I'm like, dude, if you're if you're feeling that bad, it wasn't sex you were having. You were doing something <laughs> else or something. But butt stuff. Did she require butt stuff? And that's why you felt bad. Oh, yeah. like, oh there you go. Oh, maybe it <laughs> was pegging. Go. Right. And he wasn't. Mm, yeah. No, mm. he just said, well, she's like, are you into pegging? And he didn't. He was too embarrassed to say he didn't know what that meant. Maybe yep. that's Yeah, sure. and he's old enough to have been in the military, so he could be way anyway. <laughs> so, all right, so I wrote my notes. The next day they have that awkward, while well, we fucked and it seems like everybody can tell now conversation, but apparently this is not the next day. This is like several days later. He just ghosted her for days. Mm-hmm. The hero of our movie, everybody. Yeah. I don't even know what to say here because can any normal human relate to any of this? Because... All-star quarterback hates fucking. Girl liked it. Guy apologizes. She breaks up with him. What? First of all, <laughs> this filmmaker hates women. Second of all, that's not why you ghost a girl. Because <laughs> you feel shame from fucking her. That's not the ghost that that uh, I think we're all used to. Right. Well, th- it, yeah. So he, fight, he comes up to her, I guess, a week or so later. And he says, hey, are you okay from the... Um fucking we did last week and she's like yeah i'm fine from the fucking man what why would you ask me that (laughs) he's literally unable to understand that they had consensual sex he's like i'm sorry i did that to you and she's like no it's it's fine i I wanted you to fuck me and you fucked me it was a good time and he was like why did you to to do that no no it wasn't wrong there's a (laughs) there's a wizard who's mad at us now (laughs) right (laughs) He could have thrown in at least like a, well, we're not supposed to do that before marriage so that we could kind of understand right. <laughs> where he's coming from. But I guess I can write Christian movies better than Christians. I don't know. Maybe. Well, I got to tell you, here's the lie that really got me, right? Because at one point he's like, well, it was wrong. I should have respected you more. And I'm like, no, 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 no. No, don't sell it as that, you motherfucker. You're respecting her less. Let's be super goddamn clear on that. That's what's mm-hmm. happening here. <laughs> no, I, I, I should have respected you more. I mean, not as much as I would by acknowledging that we had consensual sex, but now that I've slut shamed you and I'm literally breaking up with you, I promise from now on to treat you like a fragile vase I could knock over at any second with my <laughs> penis. <laughs> and I just, when I was watching this, and I hate to be the guy who has a kid and then keeps relating everything back to his kid because it's comedy cancer, but like, <laughs> I worry about my son, like, not hitting his milestones or not drinking enough formula. And then I remember that the bar is, don't shame your kids so hard they feel like fucking someone consensually is a bad thing. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> That's the bar I have to crawl over. <laughs> good luck. Good luck. If you need any help. <laughs> All right. Well, they, clearly, AG needs a minute to check with a man about how she feels about all of this, if this movie's anything <laughs> to go by. So we're going to pause for a quick break, but we're going to be back in a flash with even more 80s movies references. Thanks for helping us out with the ads, AG. No problem, guys. I run ads on my shows, so I get it. It needs to happen. Yeah. Well, you know, and we try to make ours, you know, fun skits. So it's not just a same boring ad read over and over. Ah, uh, gotcha. So uh, I'm, I'm here in red. Yeah. Uh, red is you. All right, that's great. All right. Hey, Eli, what you doing? Oh, hey, G, I'm just shoveling my money into this hole. Why are you doing that? Well, I'm trying to plan for my future, of course. Well, Eli, if you want to do that, why don't you... Oh, uh, guys? Uh, yeah, AG, is there, a, is there a problem? What's up? Is your sponsor this week Robin Hood? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, ha- have you guys been seeing the news no no not really i only read gamer news for gamers well it's just that 
I mean, uh, sorry, we actually have a pretty quick turnaround today. Do you mind if we talk about whatever you want to talk about afterwards? We just got to do the ad. Uh, all right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So if you could just take that from your last line. Sure. Eli. Okay. Here we go. Ready? Yeah. Go ahead. Eli, why don't you try Robinhood? What's Robinhood, AG? Well, Robinhood is an investing app that lets you buy and sell stocks, ETFs, options, and cryptos, all commission free when they feel like it. Sorry, is when they feel like it in the ad copy this week? Yeah. Yeah, they sent new ad copy this morning. It's crazy. Right. Okay. While other brokerages charge up to $10 for every trade, Robinhood doesn't charge any commission fees. Hell, how could we charge you a commission fee when we don't let you do anything but watch us bail out our billionaire cronies? Seriously, this is the copy, you guys? Yeah. I, th I thought you were a professional podcaster. Can you just read the copy that we gave you? Uh, all right. And right now, you can watch us stuff your literal cash into our pockets and run away like the piggy pigs we are. What are you going to do about it? it? Guys, I really think you might want to read the news. It's, it's just a one more line. One more line, AG, if you don't mind. Robin Hood, robbing the poor to feed the rich. Awesome. Great read, AG. Thanks. All right. Are you, are you ready for the next step? Sure. Who's it for? Dave's asbestos inhalers. The only inhaler that's fireproof. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Uh, that's going to be $3.43. Oh, Noah, where did you come from? And wh why do I owe you $3.43? For the toilet flush. Money doesn't grow on trees, man. From now on, when we flush the toilet, we have to reimburse the house. Look, Noah, if you're trying to save money, why don't you just switch to Mint Mobile? What's Mint Mobile? Mint Mobile is the easiest way to save this year. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you maximize your savings with plans starting at just $15 a month. Premium wireless for just $15 a month? You're yanking my chain. I'm not. By going online only and eliminating the traditional costs of retail, Mint Mobile passes significant savings on to you. All plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed internet data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. I mean, that sounds good, but I don't want to switch phones and lose my contacts. You don't have to do any of that. You can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. And if you're not 100% satisfied, Mint Mobile has you covered with their seven-day money-back guarantee. Wow, that does sound good. It is. To be clear, after Mint became a sponsor, I literally made the switch and I've saved hundreds of dollars a month and gotten the exact same service. Well, that does sound good. Well, how do I sign up? Well, to get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash gam. That's mintmobile.com slash gam. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash gam. Awesome. I'm in. But wait, if you've been tracking each of my toilet flushes, Noah, how much do I owe the house? Uh, slightly over $35,000. No, oh, I meant for today. Uh, that is today. Oh. And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to open up on a title card that says four weeks later. So the first thing in my notes is illegal to abort in Georgia by now, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Holy detectable heart beating on that match head. I love that they put this in because they weren't sure when morning sickness starts. <laughs> so they were just like... So, um, later. Pregnancy time later. <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe it's 40 days and 40 nights. I think yeah. is, the, <laughs> is the time. And yeah, and, and we rejoin them on the fucking play rehearsal. We're like, it's been four weeks. You guys still still going on that? <laughs> <laughs> Doing a Stanislavski three year long production. Yeah, exactly. In what? Russia somewhere. <laughs> Dostoyevsky, I think it's. <laughs> I love, there's this great moment too where like Emma's feeling a little sick and her friend Stacy turns to her and says, Emma, it's morning and you have sickness. <laughs> and the music literally goes, bum, bum, bum. The yeah. cellos kick in and everything. And you're, you're not joking either. That's no. exactly how it goes down. Because, you know, I was thinking to myself, every time I see my girlfriend not feeling well in the morning, I know what's up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> There's only one reason. 
Oh no, you were drinking. Oh, drunk. Okay, you know, that also that also will do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's very like, hey, Boone's Farm is my first thought, but <laughs> here it's here it is not. And I love the four weeks later because first of all, I think the first forty five minutes of this movie could have been an email if you know what I mean, <laughs> right? Oh my god. There's, there's nothing, what's amazing is, same with the second 45 minutes, right? Everything that happens in this movie is going to happen in the last 25 minutes. Yeah. So, okay. She's worried that she's pregnant. So she goes home to ominous cello music. She's rooting around her mom's bathroom for a pregnancy trust. You know that horror is going to have one somewhere. I'm surprised they didn't have a fucking Sam's Club multi-pack thing that she went <laughs> to or whatever. Spencer and the wall. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I actually have a pregnancy test dispenser in my house. And so I, I feel I feel that, you know, I feel that. In fact, we don't call them pregnancy scares in my house. We call them abortion scares because, yes. you know, we're liberal Satanists. Well, you know, you if you get once you get the punch card, you know, it's just it makes more sense. It's cheap. Tenth one free. So yeah. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, so she she takes a pregnancy test and. Like every goddamn movie where there's a pregnancy test afterwards, somebody's staring at a pregnancy test afterwards. She's completely ignoring the fact that she's peed on that. Like like in real life, she would have peed on that thing. She's just touching all the sides of it, shaking her, dipping it into her coffee, <laughs> stirring it. Eating you know, it. yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I love how they call it a test strip, which is the 1940s language for a pregnancy test. <laughs> Because <laughs> they used to have a little strip of paper. And so now they, they just keep using that old oh, oh, the wow. chest strip came back. Like uh, and she's also got that belt to hold her maxi pads on when she's not <laughs> pregnant. <laughs> the test strip came back positive for pregnancy and the water has lead in it. So hey, it's got a hell of a week of you. Are you there, God? It's me, Emma, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so she's talking to her friend. She's like, yeah, I'm pregnant. And she's like, oh, I guess you probably want to take care of that. And she's like, well, I feel like I owe Ethan something because, you know, it's his sperm and he didn't give me permission to make anything out of it. So <laughs> make anything out of it. <laughs> I should apologize to Ethan for being so fertile. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But, but there's this moment where she basically just turns to the screen, stares directly at the camera and says, Boy, sex sure has complicated my otherwise happy teenage life. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, and you're going to go, I, because I, I think my favorite quote, the best is at the end, when she says, where do I go from here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and then she says, and I'm not joking, she goes, it was math and teddy bears. <laughs> <laughs> it's a what? See, when she said, where do I go from here? I wrote in my notes, Planned Parenthood, girl. <laughs> like, like, it was math and teddy bears. No, I'm sorry. Did you miss health class? It was the fucking part. That, yeah. that, that. <laughs> Does like she the, think math and teddy bears get you pregnant? Because I'm really interesting. Is she is she pregonant? Is she a pregort? <laughs> All right, so... So Emma gets home and mom's sitting there with her pregnancy test on the table like she just found her weed or something, right? Mom's just sitting there stamping her foot. Mom very clearly gets the action cue too late because we watch this actress stare hatefully into the middle distance for four straight minutes <laughs> while she waits for her turn to say her line. <laughs> it's, your, it's your line, though. It's you. It's you. <laughs> And they didn't even show her like fishing it out of the garbage or where. How, as a teenage girl, do you not know how the fuck to dispose of a pregnancy <laughs> test? Where did you grow up? Who are your friends? Your friend clearly is well versed on morning sickness. Did she not give you a hint on how to dispose of your pregnancy test strip before your whore mom finds it? Right? Yeah, seriously. Bury that shit next to Joe Pesci. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> so. All right, so her mom's like, what happened here? She's like, we only had sex once and it's ruined everything my entire childhood. She's like, yeah, sex will do that. Don't worry, we're going to take you to the doctor, make sure you're really pregnant, and then we'll murder your baby, huh? <laughs> uh -huh. Murder. You want to go murder the baby? And But again, she wants to tell Ethan first, and the mom's like, in case he needs to grow a baby inside his body? I don't understand. Why are we telling him? <laughs> 
and I know that y'all have watched so many of these. This is my first time. And I know <laughs> that the first time can have major consequences. <laughs> but I'm listening to the mom here and I'm like, this is rational and reasonable. Yeah. And and yep. she's actually the bad guy. And and I'm it's 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 blowing my mind. Is that a common theme throughout these things where where I'm sitting there like, yeah, just what mom said, but she's supposed to be the villain. We have watched so many ACLU lawyers steeple their fingers in our 285 episodes. <laughs> it's amazing how much they don't know they're the bad guy in their movie. I'm worried for us, no illusions. I feel like by the time we have a new guest on episode 500, person's going to be like, so we're going to be like, Peter Frampton, the hippity hoppity, Lord Jesus, Matthew 16. <laughs> 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 we'll just entirely have lost touch with reality. <laughs> so. All right, so we go back. So we're going to go back to the tracks where Emma and Ethan have their rape prevention meet cute. <laughs> he literally goes, be careful. Like, Oh, remember? Remember a guy almost raped you? But then I, <laughs> I gave him a noogie and and told him to get out of here, scamp. You remember when I did that to your almost rapist? Don't worry, don't worry. We'll see him again. He'll almost rape Stacy, but then we'll never worry about him again. Yeah. They could have thrown a train in, you know, just for funsies, <laughs> you know, footloose style, anything. So, so yeah, so she tells him that she's pregnant in a very roundabout way. Yeah, she right? does not. She does not tell him that she's pregnant. She She's like, well, uterus, leg spread, penis, sperm, <laughs> egg, sick in the mornings, no bleeding, bye. And it, it, everything else in this script is so left turn and direct. Like, I want coffee, math. Mm, I hate math. But she can't say I'm pregnant. Right. It's, You're right. <laughs> It's like an I Love Lucy episode from the 40s. <laughs> 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 pregnant conveyor oh. belt going by too fast for her. <laughs> oh. And when she says I'm pregnant, by the way, the camera in, again, the best worst, pans over to him for him to do his realization acting, but he doesn't have it. He no. can't do that. No. So the camera's just like, you, you going to act? No. All right. I'll, All I'll right. pan well, back to Emma. We'll, do, she... we'll black out <laughs> and black back in while he goes. And then yeah, he's just an extra in this film, really. <laughs> <laughs> so, OK, so but now he's got to go back and tell his mom and dad about the thing. And I love the way this opens. This shows you how little the writer's paying attention to his own script. He's like, mom and dad, I need to talk to you. And they're like, is it about your girlfriend? We've noticed she hasn't been around lately. I'm like, it's been four weeks. <laughs> They've been broken up for like a month and a half now. <laughs> oh, by the way, the music here as he walks in is Ethan committed murder. Puppy yes. murder. <laughs> He goes, yeah, he gets his mom and his dad together. He goes, mom, dad, I, I had sex with a lady and everything is terrible in my whole life. And they're like, yeah, that's what happens when you have sex with the lady. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like when he says I slept with her and mom goes, how? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Boy, that speaks volumes about how good dad is in the sack, right? right? <laughs> exactly. Uh, with my penis. Mo I'm sorry, I don't get the question. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. But we all have to admit that if this confession scene had ended with the parents being like, so? This is our favorite movie, right? If this had done a switcheroo and the parents had just been like, you had consensual. Okay. Cool. All right, do, you, yeah, so, do you need money for the abortion? You probably, Why are you doing that thing with your face? What's going on with your <laughs> face, man? You'll get better at it as you go. Uh, if that helps. And by the way, the very first thing he says after having slept with a girl and gotten her pregnant is to turn to his father and go, I'm so sorry about your reputation. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Jesus. Yes. Yeah, teen pregnancy sure is hard on the boy's father. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, yeah. But then. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But then we adjourn to the back porch for what we then find out is the first fucking thought that his parents have about him getting a girl pregnant. The first thing that pops into their head. What is it? Yeah, it's to it's to tell the horror story of their abortion. <laughs> OK, but wait, the way they set it up, they go, we had another baby. And I was like, oh, my God, please be Emma. Please be Emma. 
Because <laughs> that's the fucking billionaire remake right there. <laughs> I just love, so he walks out and they're like, we have to tell him. So what ends up happening, the physical no, thing. No, you don't. I'm sorry, but no, you don't no. have to tell him this story. <laughs> no, there's no reason whatsoever. It, it should be like, oh, you remember that time? Oh, yeah, I do remember that. That's when you should tell that story. Anyway, but the physical like movie making thing that happens is we wrap up the mom and dad and Ethan have a heart to heart scene. And then dad calls Ethan out on the porch so him, mom, and Ethan can have a heart-to-heart -heart scene, right? <laughs> Where they explain that mom and dad once had sex, too. Mm. <laughs> and I love this, like, oh, son, uh, we know you have a problem, but let me tell you about me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> also, great little callback here. He says, well, you know, son, your mom got pregnant once before we were married. And he says, what? How? <laughs> <laughs> really wanted the little brother to step in. Okay, I've heard this twice now. I'm going to walk you guys through this diagram. <laughs> let me, let me you, tell you the definition of, you know of an, an atom. atom is. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so they tell Ethan that they murdered his baby or his older brother, apparently. Mm hmm. And I wrote in my notes as a joke, come on, ghost baby, tell me you got haunted by a ghost fetus. Except that's literally what mom well, says. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love this part because you were like, oh, wait, there's a fetus ghost. And then after you take that note, she says, we had to move because the house was haunted. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, here's the thing. We, we find out eventually that she doesn't mean that literally. She just meant that they had such bad memories in the house they were living in, right? But in the moment, you're not willing to rule out ghost fetus as a plot point in this movie, given what you know of it so far. Oh, again, such a better remake is Amityville Horror, but it's a fetus, so it can't do all the chairs. It's just like <laughs> nudging one glass towards the edge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a ghost, all right. Motherfucker. Goes to the window and he just picks a scab off in the mirror or something. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, so, and then the story goes on, by the way. Dad goes, after the abortion, I fucked a lot of women, really ran around on your mom. I'll spare you the details. It's like, well, yeah, she's sitting right there, <laughs> you asshole. But but remind me to tell you about Sydney sometime. Yeah. Remind me. Right. I want the wink, person where dad doesn't spare him the detail. <laughs> it's like, I got messed up with jazz and liquor. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Instead of hanging out with those loose women. Uh, <laughs> Dwight could put his ankles behind his head and he had the mouth like a hoover. Ah, you know what? <laughs> uh, your mom went to church and we got back together. Yeah. <laughs> God, it'd be so funny to make this movie the way we wanted to make it and just not tell anybody what it's about. Like, just not explain <laughs> what's even happening. I think oh, that'd be I, fantastic. I thought a lot about making movies that are Christian in Act One. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So and then so the mom starts talking about how, like, after the abortion, she found God and that solved everything. And she says, this is the actual quote. She says, and the pastor said something and I felt something inside me release like a giant seatbelt. And mm. what's amazing is they're not going for. And thanks to that religious message, I was less safe. But that's where they wound up anyway. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> yep. Less safe, less safe. What? And by the way, metaphor class, really? Can we? <laughs> <laughs> it was like I took off my seatbelt as I was driving down the road. No, no, that's wait. <laughs> never mind. That's bad. I just I heard it. <sighs> and let's acknowledge here how fucked up this worldview is, right? They believe that they murdered a child. They didn't, but they believe they murdered a child. But because she went to one church service yes. and the pastor was like a big a big a big a big a big it's fine that they murdered a child right i do not want to exist in a world where people are like oh don't worry about it i i did a thing on thursday night and now i am totally fine for having murdered someone <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and then why not use a car seat metaphor? Really, if you're gonna... <laughs> All right, so so now we get Emma at the dock telling her that she is, in fact, pregnant. And, and the mom's like, I knew it. Otherwise, what the hell would this movie even be about? <laughs> and this doctor, by the way, is 
not great at picking up hints. He's like, I'd like to get you on some vitamins. And of course, here's a book of baby names. And I, I couldn't help myself. Here's a collection of onesies. <laughs> <laughs> He's like the Mad Hatter. Oh, this is so fun. You know. <laughs> he kind of looks like Attorney General Bill Barr, by the way, which freaks me out. Oh, yeah. wow. And so the mom says, like, don't, don't worry about we don't need neonatal vitamins. We're, we're taking care of the pregnancy. And he gets furious, right? He's like, well, mm. I, 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 I won't refer you to somebody for that. And she's like, yeah, you don't have to. It's like there's almost certainly only one place in our entire goddamn state that does it anyway. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Good to know that you're a bad doctor, though. Thanks for the heads up about yeah. that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and if we don't know where it is, Stacy, who knows about the morning sickness, can certainly tell us. Well, yeah, oh, for sure. <laughs> He's got a speed dial, yeah. <laughs> all right, so we go to the abortion clinic, and, and here's another one that I, I only noticed this for the first time myself in this movie, but it occurred to me that every abortion clinic we've ever seen in a Christian movie is always shot through like a matrixy green filter, like a sickening green filter. <laughs> and we open up on the abortion doctor learning from his assistant how much dead baby the dead baby customers want this month. Mm. They, they might as well be talking about market prices for it like it's lobster. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's the old DNC procedure. Uh, do, do, do. Ha ha. High five. Killing babies. And first of all, this abortion doctor looks like the Reverend Jim from Taxi. He's oh, unshaved. Oh. <laughs> he hasn't oh. bathed in who knows how long. I mean, it's just it's the, the depiction. And I, I kind of noticed that green filter, too, after you brought it up. My God. A.G., First with the 80s references, now a taxi reference. A good 30% of our audience loves you, A.G. The people have spoken. <laughs> oh, well, you know, you, we also got a I Love Lucy reference. So we're just kind of getting all of the decades in. Getting this, all right? of yeah, so. You got to make a TikTok reference by the end of this yeah, podcast, though. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll miss the single zenial who listens to our show. Mm, I'll do my best. All right, so so they so that we get the doctor going like, all right, well, let's sure hope we can give her the hard sell and meet our abortion quota, and then they go in to see Emma, and they they're like, okay, so and and, and mom, of course, is like, all right, can you just suck it down? I'll hold her down. I'll hold her down. You get it. Get the baby. <laughs> if you'll just lie on the ground, Emma, me and my nurse will kick you a whole bunch. And we'll, get you, <laughs> we'll get you right out of here. We, we, we want to hope, hopefully we won't even have to use the stairs this time. So uh, right. But Emma's like, oh, I don't know. I should go ask that guy I fucked one time who immediately broke up with me for it. <laughs> and you know that the scene was added later because she her hair is rebleached in this scene. So they were like, OK, this, you know, oh, we're looking. It doesn't really make sense. Why did she want to go tell her boyfriend? And they added this shit in there later. I guarantee you because her oh, hair looks wow. wonderful, wonderful in this scene. Very freshly bleached. <laughs> also. There's this great moment. I know they're trying to do the evil doctor thing where she's like, it's his baby. And the doctor's like, oh, it's not a baby. It's, it's a grain of rice. But I mean, yeah, if you want to go ask your fucking Tinder hookup what to do with your body for the next 18 years, go ahead. I'm not going to stop yeah. you. But it's, it's a little bit smaller than a grain of rice. Just so. Also, babies are a punishment. I'm a doctor. Yeah. <laughs> so. I love to. So he sends her off with his assistant. He's like, my assistant's going to go show you some cartoons about how awesome abortion is. And I'll talk with your mom. She, he leaves. Until, basically, he's like, all right, mom, here's a morning after pill. Just put it in some peanut butter and just hide it in with the rest of her food. She'll never even know. You know, he says, here's some literature that'll help. It's like a wily e. coyote blueprint with a big axe on it. You know, <laughs> she's taken up smoking by the time she leaves. <laughs> you know what? It helps the delicate tissues in your throat. I don't know if you noticed that. <laughs> I, I know we've talked about this a million times, especially when we do abortion movies, but isn't it amazing that they can't imagine the pro-choice argument, right? Because the pro-choice argument is, I want you to have a choice. I don't mm -hmm. give a fuck if you want to have a baby. Great. Have a baby. Don't have a baby. I want you to have the choice. But because they can't fathom what it's like to want women to have the choice, they the only argument they can think of for our side is like, ooh, abortions. <laughs> but I must make an 18th baby souffle today. Otherwise, <laughs> Satan won't give me my little boy to fuck. Well, I get one every six months, whether I need it or not, you know. Yes. <laughs> All right, so they head back out to the car. Mom is very disappointed in her for not killing her baby today. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mom. I just wanted to think about it. Yeah. So, and then we get her with her friend, you know, playing up once again, playing up this, you know, 
I need to ask my boyfriend what he thinks mm. angle, mm. right? Yeah. So, okay. So she goes finally to see Ethan to get his opinion. And he says, like, well, you know, I was thinking maybe, maybe adoption, but hey, hear me out. What if we got married? And he and she's like, Well, okay, all right, okay, but you know that there's another option. He's like, No, that's murder. <laughs> she goes, There's another option. And he's like, time travel. Yeah, I thought about it. I thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking stupid. <laughs> So, yeah, so he chases her out of a restaurant screaming, it is a baby, I won't condone murder. He's the good guy in the movie. Protagonist, everybody. Protagonist. All right. Oh, and then this is going to turn out to be a pivotal goddamn moment in the fucking movie. She wakes up and she's spotting a little. Uh, she notices a little blood on her sheets. Dun, dun, dun. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, this is the turn. But um, so first they, they go back to that anti-abortion doctor who assures her that she's fine. It's not a big deal. And our mom is amazing here because he's like, oh, the baby's fine. Don't worry. And mom's like, fuck, fuck. <laughs> Shit. I just wanted her to be swearing throughout the rest of the scene. Like they're having a very serious conversation. And she's just in the background being like, motherfucker. She's kicking the trash can. <laughs> <laughs> oh, balls to the asshole. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so so mom's like, if, if, you know, needs her to quit fucking around and murder that damn baby all, already. Then she texts Ethan, who's just been sitting around all kind of worried about his unborn baby. Mm -hmm. And he goes to his parents. He's like, Mom, Dad, we need to get the prayer chain started. No, two prayer chains started. <laughs> Activate the phone tree. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder Twins. Wait. <laughs> so fucking stupid. Okay. So Ethan goes to sit outside, collect his thoughts. And just then the football coach shows up. Well, what's weird is he says, I got to go for a drive. And then he ends up somehow sitting in an empty chair in front of <laughs> coach's house. Right. Because they don't know how to do film while driving. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what, how amazing would it be if he had just been like miming, turning on a car? <laughs> 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 oh, what a wait. Drive with the <laughs> invisible steering wheel running down the sidewalk, runs into coach. <laughs> so, yeah, but the coach shows up and he's like, hey, coach. He's like, hey, man, I, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, I, I was watching the, the way that you were taking snaps in practice the other day. And I'm like, you know what? That motherfucker impregnated a feminist, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like the fact that the, they show them, come inside, let's talk. They sit down. And the first thing that Ethan says is, and that's the whole story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice arc. <laughs> And I, 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 like you said, I coach could tell by his footwork. Yes, <laughs> yes, that he got somebody pregnant. So, and then he's like, "Well, you know, I actually know that your parents murdered their pre-baby." Yeah, and I love that coach knows about Ethan's parents' abortion. Though she did tell that story pretty easily. She probably just tells people at cocktail parties. Like, yeah, right. Unprompted right. all the no, time. Like, tell us about hey, the fucking abortion again. I like your she... scarf. Yo, let me tell you about this one time I had an abortion. <laughs> like. <laughs> They have shrimp cocktail here. That reminds me. I had an abortion. <laughs> They're shaped. Yeah, yeah, that works. Well, I love there's this moment, too, where the coach is like, well, you know, God is punishing you for all the fucking enjoy and everything. He says, but keep in mind that whatever decision Emma makes, your life will be affected forever. And I'm like, unless she has an abortion. <laughs> right. And this movie does such a bad job of trying to pitch this. They're like, look, if she has an abortion, you'll always know she murdered your baby. So, you know, thought crimes. But wait, hear me out. If she doesn't have an abortion, all the terrible things that come from having an, a child as a teenager. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, I love that, you know, uh, you'll always remember that she murdered your baby. It's like, well, now I will. Thanks, coach. <laughs> yeah, right. I, if you pretend that murder happened, you will be upset about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then and then just to make their movie uh, that much less convincing, he says, now, you know that if you married Emma, you would almost certainly lose your football scholarship to college that is your chief means of obtaining a better future for yourself. <sighs> He's like, yep. What an inspirational <laughs> coach, you know? 
just <laughs> he is the epitome of the football high school football high school teen movie football coach you know <laughs> hey your life is fucked no matter what here bro <laughs> have a nice day I really wanted him to go down all the alternatives now maybe you're thinking what if I murder her right Scott Peterson style right <laughs> oh, well I'll tell you what'll happen you gotta get a sharp chainsaw a lot of people think oh chainsaw can cut through a tree but that's flesh flesh will get all cut up in the chain it's meant for trees <laughs> And I see earlier in the script, you pondered a time machine. Well, let me tell you, you can get one right off of eBay. <laughs> so. That's when you meet your dark side self from the back dimension. <laughs> you're, you're, you're right. just, it'll be you, but with a goatee. <laughs> you're 30, so you can grow one. Your mom doesn't know who to shoot. <laughs> right. So then, so I, and I love, there's this moment, so, the, he, he's talking to the coach for a while and then the mom pops in we have this insane goddamn scene where the mom's like hey don't worry everything's taken care of I talked to your aunt Teresa and her prayer chain is going as well and those motherfuckers can pray hmm. <laughs> speaking of which it turns out that there's a guy speaking at her church who is an anti-abortion lawyer Hey, guys, what's a good name for our anti-abortion lawyer that'll make him seem, you know, really human and relatable? Dolan Forsett. Forsett the third. Yeah, right, <laughs> the right. Third. It's like, wait, did you just get pulled over and have to make something up? <laughs> you want to just sound <laughs> Slave owner, the 17th <laughs> Earl of Baskin and Robbins. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Van Rensler Schuyler the third. <laughs> oh, oh, and I I fucking love when Christians have to make up smart people stuff. There's nothing better than it's like he's <sighs> the king of Harvard. He <laughs> killed everyone at Yale. And he's the founder of dictionary. <laughs> It's uh, the, the, he had the highest conviction rate of he was he was the MVP. He had a really high lawyer batting average, average, <laughs> yeah. average lawyering. He did lots of lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> so and we get him. So they, they do this ridiculous introduction for him. And then he starts giving his little talk. And he's like, you know, I guess the question I'm most often asked is, why do you love unborn babies more than money? Well, let me tell you. Right. <laughs> oh, okay. Question. Do you guys think he just nailed this audition? Because this guy cannot fucking act. Mm -mm. But he is set up in this movie like they got a good actor. Yeah. Right? We've seen enough of these that like, oh, fuck, that guy from Cheers. They got him. Right, he's going right, to play the yeah. famous lawyer. But it's like someone's dad who donated the most to Kickstarter. Like, if I went back and saw that their top Kickstarter patron was like, <laughs> you get to be the fancy Jesus lawyer, I'd be like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Oh, my God. You know what, though? I think that... You actually may have hit it like this was the part that like they had a, a, a lesser Baldwin to play, but then they got into a fight or something and they had because right. that, that actually that actually tracks <laughs> where these are made. And I have to say, when I watched this speech, when you talk about Christians and, and Republicans having to write left wing characters, when he says that he gave up, as you mentioned, a lucrative career in public service to love fetuses. First of all, there's no such thing as a lucrative career in public service. No, Ooh, not if you're nope. an honest person. No. <laughs> like, like, you never hear anyone say, why did I give up all that lucrative public service career for, for mega church god money? Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know all these Harvard grads giving up that sweet government money to live a life of poverty lobbying for pro-life super PACs. <laughs> it happens <laughs> every day. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And then, of course, they're going to introduce this. This will come up about 31 more times before this movie is over. He points out that those damn liberals care more about animals than unborn babies. No, that's true. That's yeah. why liberals are constantly like harassing people outside of McDonald's. And all those <laughs> McDonald's get bombed or the, the mass shooting that happened inside a Burger King earlier this year. Mm -hmm. I mean, we got to own that, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Well, I got my Soros check for that. <laughs> well, the post office is having trouble, so I'm still waiting on them. But yeah. 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 So now we're going to, Ethan is going to meet with this lawyer, though, so that they can get together and figure out how they can sue to take control of Emma's organs. 
<laughs> this conversation might as well go, hey, Mr. Dolan, is this movie stupid? And he's like, oh, super stupid. <laughs> super fucking stupid. And I'm no lawyer, but he said something about we're not going to do a civil suit. We're going to do a criminal suit where yeah. we sue her in a civil suit. No, that's not. <laughs> That's not a thing. It's not. We're going to sue her criminally. <laughs> That's what they did in this film. It's yes. amazing. The whole court structure is like on fucking Mars. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> yeah, because apparently they're going to charge her with fucking taking out a contract to murder her fetus, right? Like attempted murder or something, but in a civil <laughs> trial. Yeah. What? And amazingly, I get they didn't have to put this in the movie. He goes, hey, uh, if this worked, wouldn't someone already have done this on our side? And he's like, <laughs> oh, good, good question. Don't worry. Just now, science proved that fetuses are people. So we're, we're going to nail this one. And I have a brand new argument about homicide of pregnant ladies yeah, being called a no double homicide. No one's ever tried before. that shit before. <laughs> With, ooh. Yeah, so he explains, he's like, yeah, so we're going to file a restraining order so that Emma won't be allowed within 100 yards of her Okay, I heard it. I heard it as I was saying it that time. So, we're, um, so but, but don't worry. He says medical science has advanced to the point that many think life begins at conception. Advanced, huh? Advanced. Yeah. Okay. All right. oh. in, our, in our criminal civil suit restraining order. <laughs> restraining lawsuit. And then in this fantastic moment of almost self-awareness, Ethan's like, hey, uh, do you think Emma will be mad at me for <laughs> literally trying to enslave her uterus and force her to give birth? <laughs> and the, the lawyer's like, um, don't let her kill your baby. And he's like, yeah, let's not let her kill my baby. Yeah, you know, I only have two bachelor's degrees, but I think that this might upset my high school girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what, it took its fucking time, but it looks like we finally made it to the plot of this thing. <laughs> so we're going to take a well-earned break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Is the Supreme Court really supreme? Objection just means nah, -uh, right? What does that little hammer do anyway? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the phenomenally uninformed conclusion of The Order of Rights. Mom? Dad? Can I talk to you for a second? Yes, honey, of course. It's just, last night, I went over to Emily's and, well, I touched the floor. <gasps> but, uh, son, you know the floor is lava. I know, Dad, I do. It's just, they didn't have the lava railings that we have. And she kept saying, it's fine. The floor isn't really lava. And so I, I walked on the floor, Dad. Oh, Timmy, how could you? I know, I know. I'm sorry, Mom. Like, now my legs are burned off, right? Yes, son, I'm I'm afraid they are. They might not look like they are, but they burned off from the lava. I know. But, son, there is something we need to tell you. Yeah, Mom? When we were younger, your your mother and I, that is, well, we also stepped on the floor and our legs burned off once. They did? Yes, we were young and foolish, and our legs got burned off by lava. But if your legs got burned off by the lava that's on the floor, then how can you walk? Well, son, you see, me and your father both asked the invisible lava man in the sky to magic our legs back onto our bodies. And then we went to the invisible lava building and got a circle, circle, dot, dot, and our legs grew back. Wow, I never knew. Uh-huh. Now, what say we go sue Emily for burning off your legs, huh? That sounds great, Dad. That sounds great. This is what this movie is about. It is. That is exactly what, what the this movie is about. about. Yeah. And we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to open up on Emma's mom getting served with the 
you know, we're suing for your daughter's uterus papers. <laughs> the, the the criminal civil complaint yes. uh, <laughs> summons <laughs> the exactly. service of restraining order. Yeah. <laughs> really wanted it to flash cut over to their lawyer, Andrew Torres, just laughing his ass off reading their order. <laughs> oh, God. Who the, oh, fuck, God. who the fuck wrote this? Oh, my God. They paid someone to write this, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tweet this. I'm going to tweet this. Here in a second. <laughs> Was it Sydney Powell? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and the mom is rightfully fierce. Like, at this point, I'm like, okay, if this becomes like a revenge movie where Emma's mom goes and kills Ethan's family one member at a time, all kill Bill style, I'll like it, right? I'll oh, absolutely, okay. yeah. But instead, this is where we get the goddamn mirror match from Mortal Kombat. <laughs> right where the two we, I just wrote my notes Karen fight where the two blonde moms meet in the grocery store oh my god they, they wrote this so clumsily so evil liberal mom blocks nice mom's grocery cart with her cart mm -hmm. but not before we see a flash of a single dad with his kids lovingly shopping for cereal yeah, yeah right he's got like seven kids following him like a skit or some damn shit <laughs> yes <laughs> but she pulls her card out in front and then there's this awkward, they don't know how to write it so it's like um, excuse me I need to get by you oh do you yes or do you <laughs> yes oh I guess well, it's very inconvenient when you want to do something and then there's a pa paper that is served Shit. Uh, so you, you, Groceries. <laughs> my daughter's abortion is this cheese and your the cheese monk. No, no one's the cheese monger. No, no, wait. Is there a seatbelt? Is there a seatbelt? And I'm good with their seatbelts. And I love the 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 eavesdropper who is Liza Minnelli for some reason shopping for cheese. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. And then it's Ms. Stein, of course, because, you know, we have to throw in the uh, feminist Ms. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. She's like, Mrs. Stein. I, no, no, no. I want to be upset about this right now, even though you're trying to sue for custody of my child's uterus. <laughs> which, which, what blows me away is that the whole time in this fucking movie, she's holding this little glass jar of like garlic or something. The fact that she doesn't smash it over Ethan's mom's head at any point <laughs> pisses me off off so bad yeah yeah it does and then they slip the evil uh, liberal associated press in there oh yeah <laughs> she's like i'll go talk to my friends with the fake news jewish media and they'll take you down <laughs> <laughs> and then and then good mom does a counter monologue right because ms does like a you're you people and i'm gonna stick the jew media on you and then the other mom's like it's my turn to do a monologue. It's my turn to do a monologue. <laughs> yes. Chases her out to the parking lot. I really wanted it to continue, right? Like then liberal mom chases her back to her car and does a different, <laughs> just the last 30 minutes of the movie are just them monologuing back Driving and forth. Driving side by side, <laughs> fighting at every red light or something. Yeah, exactly. And what I love so much about this is that like as bad as Emma's mom's lines were, right? Where she's going like, but this grocery cart is like you blocking my daughter's way to the abortion clinic. Whatever. As bad as all that is, it's even worse when they have to present their own position. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Because Ethan's mom is just stumbling around spewing idiot nonsense words. None of it makes sense. She says baby a bunch of times. Ba ba you the cheese was the baby in the cart. No one's the monger. Damn it. <laughs> so, <laughs> Baby monger. So now Emma and her mom check in with their lawyer. And he's like, mm, this is going to be a tough case because I am a terrible lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, all right, well, we're going to need a media strategy first and foremost. I'm like, I feel like you need a legal strategy first, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Right. And he ends the meeting by going, if they win, this could push women's rights back a hundred years. And the movie wants you to be like, oh, gee, wouldn't that be great? Yeah, <laughs> finally. <Cool. laughs> All right. Oh, oh. And then we get real life. Nobody. Steve Deese. Who is Steve Deese. <laughs> is going to summarize the plot for us on his real life YouTube channel. <laughs> I was going to ask, are these real conservative talk radio hosts, by yes. the way? Yes, they are. Yes. Uh, 
Uh, you might remember Steve Deese for calling for Donald Trump to hang Antifa members in the square. Yep. No, I, I don't think I remember anything Steve <laughs> Deese did. Mm. But I liked the uh, nice throwback to there being no there there. Way to slip in a Russia hoax joke. Is that why? I was wondering if that's why you all wanted me on this episode. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he's sitting there. I love he's doing his cameo in a movie. He's got his goddamn books front and center. Like, you can buy my books, by the way, if you want, if you like my part in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. And we, we have the stock footage of abortion protests here as the conservative media says the entire world is, you know, up in arms about this new case of whether or not you're allowed to own another human being as property that's playing <laughs> out in this courtroom for some reason. Yeah, a local <laughs> courtroom. Yes. <laughs> uh, but with a jury, uh, but it's a restraining order hearing. <laughs> I am so confused. <laughs> what would the jury do? <laughs> we find her guilty of being pregnant, <laughs> not loving her baby. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, and oh, and then we get the moment where like Ethan and Emma see each other in the halls of, of the school, and it's just supposed to be like, oh, sure is awkward for them. Instead of like, she rips his balls off and shoves them down <laughs> his fucking throat. It's always awkward when you run into the person who's trying to enslave you into childbirth. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> or as AG would put it, this is like when Skeeter said that he and Topanga had sex. <laughs> I don't remember the main character's name. I just remember that he said he fucked Topanga and she was mad at him. <laughs> All, right, so. All right. So now they say, okay, so they're like, our opening arguments begin today because they think that's a thing or they're just a fan of the podcast. Who, do, who the hell knows? <laughs> but we open on the bad guy lawyer. It's so weird because in their mind, he's the good guy lawyer, but I cannot call him <laughs> the good guy lawyer. So the evil, terrible person suing to reinstate ownership of women starts off his case by stroking off to the sanctity of America's founding documents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> by which he means the Declaration of Independence. Yeah, right. That's a memo, dude. That's not like a... <laughs> and and he also, he brings up this goddamn... Thing. Mike Pompeo blew his load at this part in the movie where he starts talking about the order of those rights. They do the top, uh, the title drop. And he's like, it's all about the order of those rights. I'm like, no, yeah. it's not, man. Apparently never uh, took a peep at the Federalist Papers that said <laughs> the order is irrelevant yes, exactly yes what? <laughs> why would the order matter because they're trying to make the argument that if you have the right to life liberty and the pursuit of happiness if life comes before liberty then abortion should be illegal even if you have even if your liberty would be impinged upon by being forced to to give birth right that's the art the central argument of the move right you can't have the pursuit of happiness without liberty and you can't have liberty without life Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Just Thomas Jefferson sitting around going, wait, guys, guys, can dead people be happy? This is important. I want to get this right. Because <laughs> I think I have this in the wrong order. <laughs> we got to crawl before we can walk. Got to walk before we can fly. Am I right? <laughs> I told you we should put driver's licenses at the beginning. <laughs> I love the... Um the, the protagonist lawyer, the good guy lawyer, who's the bad guy lawyer in this movie's opinion, his opening argument, he basically just stands up and he goes, this is a fucking, even in this, even in their own movie, this is just a stupid bullshit publicity stunt, right? <laughs> yeah. And the jury is like, mm, bullshit goes, publicity bullshit stunt movie is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and beyond the fact that the case would never have gotten this far, I don't know, is this even a federal court or is it like, I can't even figure it out. There's a jury. Then he points at the jury. I still don't see the jury. Then I see the jury. And then Forsett, their good guy, objects. And that one is sustained, even though Forsett had the same objection that was overruled a minute ago. <laughs> and the second objection doesn't even have cause. No. And then our lawyer withdraws. I can't. I just can't even. <laughs> it's so I love the opening arguments end and we get some like random news clips over the top of the montage going like, well, it's a very interesting plot for a movie. It's kind of riveting if you think about it. <laughs> and then the evil lawyer calls Ethan as his first witness, right? 
And he's like, uh, have you ejaculated in anyone in this courtroom in the last nine months? He's like, yeah, I said that that girl right over there. He's like, okay, all right. So first, and this is very important, blink twice if you've been kidnapped and forced to give this testimony against your will, right? By me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like the movie dives into a 90 second explanation of how these two characters met that we've already seen. They're not mm. real. They're not real movie. You don't have to do any of this. <laughs> He's badgering his own witness. <laughs> so, yeah, and then the good guy lawyer, the lawyer that believes that women should not be property, comes up for his cross examination, right? And he's like, "So the fetus," and Ethan says, "The baby." And I'm like, "No, motherfucker, your dumbass argument is that those two words mean the same goddamn thing. You don't get to hide from it. You're saying fetus and baby are the same goddamn word." Mm. Right. So, yeah, mm. it's prejudicial for the jury that we actually haven't laid eyes on yet. Yeah, yes. exactly. Don't correct me with your argument. <laughs> Mr. Johnson, on the night of the 34th, you mean when I was innocently sitting there? No, <laughs> you, <can't. laughs> you don't get to do that. <laughs> so I'm leading myself, your honor. <laughs> So, objection to me withdrawn <laughs> sustained <laughs> happy birthday i love that the uh her lawyer emma's lawyer says to him at one point he's like did you just do this to create media attention i'm like why is that why is your angle not are you emma <laughs> <laughs> i feel like that's the only question that matters here <laughs> it sure fucking is but again Let's just keep in mind the movie maker's perspective. The people who made an entire movie about their argument, they got lights, they got cameras, they paid these actors and, you know, fucking biscotti or whatever Christian movie actors get paid in <laughs> about their argument. And now they're like, but we're not in this for the attention. We're really here. For the <laughs> it's important we clarify because of our love of Christ. <laughs> He's so... All right, so now they're going to try out this anti-abortion doctor to talk up the horrors of abortion. He's like, uh, you're a doctor. Are fetuses human beings? He's like, yep, full-grown human beings. They uh, they even have favorite sports teams. Favorite sports teams, huh? He goes, can a fetus feel pain? He says, yes, it responds to stimuli. Mm. <laughs> they All objects do that, man. <laughs> to, to be an out to qualify as object, you must respond to stimuli. <laughs> Wait, where's the nerdy science son to explain yeah. Yeah. Uh, Newton's second theory? <laughs> Adams do that. I don't know if you guys, you know what an atom is, guys? <laughs> That's you know? how I learned that Newton's third law is a baby. <laughs> <laughs> the fetus at rest stays at rest unless acted upon by a non zero net penis. But more than his arguments, I would like to talk about this doctor's eyebrows. <laughs> on fleek. I could not focus on anything because of his eyebrows at all. They're, they're baffling. They're, like, they're baffling. You, it seems like something that Mario would have to jump on to get to the next level. Yeah. It's like some he was wearing a Groucho nose, you know, glasses <laughs> set. And as a prank, someone super glued it to his face. And this is how far the surgeon has gotten. So <laughs> <laughs> for the corrections. Uh, I know I want like a sex lies and videotape mashup. <laughs> <laughs> and again, just to show how terrible their argument is. He concludes by going, a doctor, when does life begin? And the doctor answers, let me answer your question about DNA. Uh, DNA is a circle at conception. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Then we get the cross-examination, of course, because this movie is trying to make its own point and is aware that it's trying to make its own point. They have the pro-choice lawyer center his entire argument around the question of viability, right? That's the only argument this guy ever makes. Well, could the fetus survive outside of the womb? No. Well, then we win, right? If it was anything else, obviously we would lose. But <laughs> it's going to hang my entire argument on that. Yeah. And then I love how Forset just redirects without asking any fucking permission. He just nope. gets up and starts <laughs> like, asking I get questions. Bonus questions. <laughs> <laughs> it's my turn. I go again. I go. I go. And by the way, hey, credit to this movie, because like 
That viability trap is a dumb argument that you can think your way out of in 45 seconds. But I'll tell you the way not to think your way out of it is disabled people are in fact humans and three-year-olds cannot survive on their own. (laughs) (laughs) Because they think viability means like, now if you were dropped a fetus into a forest. (laughs) Paying bills. (laughs) Paying the mortgage. <laughs> yeah, they, <laughs> I, can we define, can we take a moment to define viability real quick? It, it, it doesn't like, mean, you know, <laughs> getting your GED, you know, going to trade school. <laughs> Diabetics are dependent. You want to let abortion doctors kill them? Is that actually your point, man? Is that the point you're literally making right now? What if they want health care? Shut up. Don't use my thing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't use my We'll, we'll get we'll get to the postnatal abortions later. Yeah, yes. in the trial. Oh God! And so then we we have another like the media sure is interested in this case montage where we they trot out Alveda King. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, the niece or whatever of Martin Luther King that is an anti-abortion activist, where she explains that abortion is the real civil rights issue. So. Mm. And her whole argument is that it is bad for the black community and. The viewer will recall that neither Emma nor Ethan are black. No, no, <laughs> as it turns out. No, but we've seen Elvira King in a couple of movies now, and her specialty seems to be just taking quotes from her uncle about children and pretending they were about fetuses. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Mm, yeah. Ah, the old retroactive Martin Luther King Jr. child fetus trick. I've seen it. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and so, but the reason they do this is because they're trying to get the liberals, like beat the liberals at their own game and say, see, they're the racist ones. Abortion is anti-black people. Right. <laughs> and even though that doesn't isn't supported by anything we've been talking about in this movie up to this point, they still trot out that argument because, you know, it's just a knee jerk thing for them. Hmm. Well, I was killing the whites, so maybe that's better. (laughs) Then we can probably cut that out if you think we need to. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) Oh, no. You're you're in good place. Yeah. So uh, uh, not unless you serve me with some kind of court order, civil criminal trial. (laughs) Well, I was going to do a civil criminal restraining order trial. Oh, okay. Go the federal in federal local (laughs) district (laughs) magistrate court municipal level. Yeah. Andrew has to fight himself like liar, liar. (laughs) (laughs) I object. Why? Because it's devastating to my case. (laughs) All right. So we get Emma and mom having breakfast at some restaurant where Emma sure wishes she could be owned as property by a man. Now that she thinks about it. Oh, this is so good because (laughs) they can't imagine why someone would get an abortion so they're trying to have these actors working out in real time through the dialogue. Mm. Yeah, well, and, and of course, Emma's mad because her lawyer sure was mean to Ethan, and she was kind of hoping to still patch things up with him after he was done suing for ownership of her body. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then the movie gives us a twist, right? We cut over to Ethan and his lawyer. This is where we learn that the court is going to force Emma to testify. You know how courts will do that to you? <laughs> Your Honor, I would like Emma's fetus to testify so you can't murder her because I call him at the age of 17. <laughs> oh, God. So we now here's the really terrifying part of this movie, right? This is the world these people actually want to live in. Right. This is their movie. What we're watching is at least, you know, she's 30 years old. But what we're supposed to be watching is a teenage girl being drug up before a a, a full courtroom that's getting national media attention and being forced to justify her choice to have an abortion to a judge and a lawyer. Mm. Yep. That's the world they want to live in. Mm -hmm. And then they force this actress to say, Oh, well, you know, I was very hormonal at the time. Like, women are just confused with the <laughs> yes, papers. They exactly. can't make their own choices. <laughs> yeah. I want to see this actress like... You know I like, can't I make would, any decisions. I got my I, You want me to say what? <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, 
I was just PMSing when I wanted an abortion. Ladies, you get it, right? You get on the rag, you grab a pumpkin spice latte, you kill your baby. We've all been there. Thank God for men. I wouldn't have been able to comport my scatterbrain long enough to make the right choice. Also, I love all of the random single teenage boys in the gallery. Yeah. <laughs> what are you guys doing here? You want to play some PlayStation? No, I'm going to go watch this abortion trial, Mom. <laughs> it's, I, at one point, her lawyer like stands up and she goes, Objection, this is like literally psychological torture. I believe the Geneva Convention bans this. And the judge is like, all right, all right, I'll allow it. But you're right. You're right. <laughs> all right. That is, this is not how objections work or how allowing or not allowing them works, but... I'll keep continuing the movie. <laughs> or that the Geneva Convention applies. I like <laughs> So, okay, so we get the cross-examination, right? Where her lawyer just goes up and goes, wow, fucked up that anyone in their right mind would even imagine a world where any of this was legal, huh? Whew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But again, they try and save it by the end. He's like, okay, Emma, again, this is literally the entire court case do you want to have a baby? And she's like, pass, pass, pass. Come back to me. Doing that like shaky thumb, waiting for the thumbs up, thumbs down. McCain on the floor of the Senate, Chuck Norris at the dodgeball finals. Oh, and then, and then as, as her testimony wraps up we zoom over to ethan's dad right and he goes wow this is very hard on me (laughs) (laughs) oh i'm having such a bad day (sighs) my parking spot is so far from the courthouse (laughs) (laughs) all right so yeah so now it's time for good guy lawyer or in their world bad guy lawyer to present his case which is just a doctor saying true things as opposed to the liar <laughs> fake doctor. Yeah. yeah. Right. She, he, he brings up this doctor and he says, so, hey, is the um, is the alternative to safe legal abortion no abortion at all? And the doctor's like, nope. And he's like, mm, weird that we're still talking. It's crazy. Also, by the way, is a fetus just like a diabetic? Also, no, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that first guy. He's an idiot, yeah? Oh, no, he's yeah, a fucking com- idiot. Completely, I don't know if you noticed, but the college he mentioned was a Pentecostal, unaccredited Pentecostal church in Washington State. So, yeah, <laughs> it's not really a anything. But, of course, they can't, like, just let this doctor present pro-abortion, pro-choice arguments that make sense. So she has to also say, no, a fetus is no different than tonsils. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and and now it's time for the cross-examination where good guy lawyer, right? The anti-choice lawyer is like, all right, Dr. K, I'm holding a fetus behind my back. (laughs) Or am I? (laughs) Can you prove that I'm wrong with your science books? (laughs) (laughs) He says, do you know when a fetus becomes a person? And the doctor's like, well, and he's like, then it's a person. It's a person because I'm the one who's willing to say yes. (laughs) So I win. (laughs) I really wanted her to be like, hey, do you know for a perfect fact that your shoes aren't a person? And he's like, my God, Timmy and Jimmy, what have I done? (laughs) (laughs) And I love the part where, where he's like, all right, so are there any doctors anywhere in the world who disagree with you? Well, let's just no. It's yes or no. Yep. Yes. yes. <laughs> and she goes, well, she's yes, like, there are doctors. Aha! Then no one knows anything anywhere in the world. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. Science doesn't know. <laughs> he goes, isn't it true that there are qualified medical professionals that think I'm right? And I'm like, define qualified. <laughs> that's, that's the brilliant thing. Is right. He probably can't say like doctors or OBGYNs because you can lose your license for being like, hi everybody, I'm your OBGYN. Your belly's full of magic. <laughs> so they have to be like, is there or is there not a dental hygienist who disagrees with you? <laughs> well, my optometrist thinks, aha! <laughs> right, exactly. Cornered. Gotcha. 
This is also when he says that six week old fetuses have faces. So I actually included my six week ultrasound in the notes. <laughs> yeah, I can't even figure out where the baby is on this thing. <laughs> Jesus fucking face. Give me a goddamn break. Also, okay. So, and then they, they bring up a social worker, right? The, the, the pro-choice lawyer brings up a social worker and he's like, hey, so in your professional experience, um, teen moms that are forced to birth children, do they crush it? Do they just totally crush it? <laughs> Why? Why would they put this in their movie? I don't know. What? Did they lose a lawsuit to abortion? And they were like, fine, we'll We'll put one woman, the only other woman of color in the movie in here to describe the horrible things we're trying to do to young women. What percentage of women do you say that speak to you get an abortion? Well, I don't know. No, you tell me. You just ballpark it. Well, I don't have those exact figures. I don't, I'd hate to take it. No, you have to answer my question. No one objects, by the way, to this line <laughs> of questioning. And then they go over to the judge. She doesn't have a desk. Did anyone notice this? The judge <laughs> yep. is just sitting behind the railing. Yep. You're right. And yeah, so they're basically trying to make us think that liberals want everyone to have abortions so they don't end mm -hmm. up drinking and failing out of college. That's, that's pretty much the, the message here. Right. And this social worker, again, I do not know why they put this in the movie, was like, look, when you force people to have children, terrible things happen to them. Statistically, personally, there is no way not to see this on an attack on women. To which good guy lawyer responds, I would like that last statement struck from the record. Okay, yes. And the judge <laughs> says, cool. Yes. <laughs> Oh, that was pretty bad for your case. Yeah, let's pretend that. Let's. Can you unsay that? Make the uh, make the witness unsay that. Yeah. Well, so what she says because because he's trying to get her with like like you know you know trying to make the social worker so that she can too handle the truth. But then what she goes on to say is like, look, I've seen a thousand times children in this situation, and when they have abortions, things tend to go way fucking better for them in life. Right. So are you asking me if when I see a woman drowning, I throw her a life preserver? The answer is yes. And he says, oh, abortion is a life preserver. Can we have that stricken for the record? Because it's actually obviously a death preserver. And the judge is like, it is a death preserver. Yes. Yeah, so. It's a death preserver. I'm a judge. I didn't get a desk, but I'm a judge. <laughs> I'm making it up as I go along. When you just make it up as you go along, you don't really need a desk. She actually just has a like a ball peen hammer instead of a gavel. <laughs> <laughs> she broke the first desk. That's why. <laughs> All right. So the, the defense rests, right? We're going to get closing arguments tomorrow so that we can get a few scenes wedged in between now and then. We start off with evil lawyer, the, the anti-abortion lawyer in his office looking at what I can only assume is a picture of his unaborted daughter. Yes. <laughs> she made it. Oh, I'm so glad I didn't abort her. <laughs> or maybe that's just a picture of a woman who's the age his aborted daughter would have been. I don't know. Oh, yeah, they come in the frames. No, you know what it is? <laughs> maybe it's the paperwork that he was supposed to deliver to coach somehow got waylaid over to this lawyer. <laughs> He's framed it in the interim. <laughs> All right, so yeah, but and then we get the evil Ethan's mom and dad. They're sure worried about that fetus. Oh, and then we see uh, Emma's mom. She's at her art gallery, and now all of the good religious people in town won't even talk to her because of all the abortion stuff. <laughs> yeah, and so now here we are in this art gallery. By the way, this is the first time a shot is really well lit in this movie when it shouldn't have been, and it shouldn't have been. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So they have lights. Now we know. They have lights. <laughs> well, they had them at this moment anyway, yeah. But yeah, so Emma comes in to check out the art, you know, because there's the big art showing, and wouldn't you know it, it's a bunch of Jesus art. And it leaves Emma sitting there thinking, wow, what if Mary had aborted baby Jesus? Mm -hmm. It's so bad. <laughs> so it's just, just imagine someone with no talent being like, but what if the people in medieval paintings had like a foot hanging out of the painting? <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the genre. That's the gist. And it just... It reeks of wasted talent, right? I don't know who this artist is and I don't know how much they gave on Kickstarter to be included in this movie. But like, <laughs> you can kind of see the start of some talent there that a fucking youth pastor was like, oh, you should draw the same six characters that we drew for, you know, a thousand years. And she was like, okay, I'll just draw those ones. But can I make a lowercase t at the bottom? Yeah, fuck yeah, you can. All right, I'll make a lowercase t. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so we wrap that up. It's time to convene for closing arguments. Fuck yeah. Dun, now, dun, dun. three quarters of this movie will be 
the evil anti-abortion lawyer's closing argument. And it's insanity, <laughs> right? He just starts off by going, okay, so the other, the other guys are murderers that want to murder babies with murder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think he literally says the opposing counsel will argue that women have rights and science is real. Like, I think there's something yes. <laughs> very literal about this. The best way that I can describe this is occasionally I watch a very silly person try to engage no illusions in a Facebook fight. If you combined all of their comments, <laughs> it's this close. So you admit that you don't have four fingers behind your back because they can't prove. That's why they dehumanize. I look forward. Sciences. <laughs> yes. He goes at one point, he says, and they try to like, distract you from how much of a human being it is by saying words like fetus. Oh, and by the way, fetus means little person. Does not? No, it doesn't. <laughs> I, why introduce that? I looked the etymology up. It, it's Latin for full of young. It's equally applicable to pregnant women and eggs. <laughs> why would you say this? It's just not. It's you're just wrong. Why bother adding this? Even if you were right, it's not like that would then make it convincing. <laughs> this part of the movie was so boring and crazy that I just started scrolling through the Instagram of the main actress. And I was like, oh, she got engaged this year and she isn't wearing a mask in any of her photos. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm also dying to know Emma's lawyer's co-counsel sitting there at the table. Doesn't have uh, a line. In the tuxedo? All movie, yeah. <laughs> What's his story? Pocket square, bow tie. What's he doing in the small town? You know? <laughs> okay. Here's what I guarantee. I would bet all the money I have, AG, that they were like, all right, Steve, you're going to be the co-counsel. So wear a really nice suit. And Steve was <laughs> like, well, what's the nicest suit? A tuxedo, of course. <laughs> so he shows up for the day of shooting in his tuxedo. And they're like, no, dude, a suit. And he's like, it's a suit. It's a tuxedo. <laughs> Tuxedo's a suit. <laughs> So, yeah, so he wraps up with this convoluted order of rights thing again. He goes, if it's a baby, it has all the God-given rights enumerated in our Declaration of Independence. And I'm like, you're right, and it doesn't have those rights. What did we just learn? <laughs> we did. No? Okay. And then, of course, the bad guy lawyer has to come out to give his closing argument, and it can't be good, so he has to just go, viability means... If, if you drop him in a forest with nothing but a butterfly knife, can it get <laughs> home? Yeah. And then he closes by saying, don't punish this young girl with a baby. Yeah, yeah. Punish her with a baby. Right. Uh. <laughs> yes. It's like, I just want to remind you one last time that viability is the only argument that the pro-choice side has at all. Also, the Supreme Court rulings are binding. What are we doing here? <laughs> <laughs> he, he, does, he does mention that at the very end. At the very end, he's like, by the way, this case is stupid. This movie is stupid. So they're going to ask you to decide some shit that we already decided. Have a nice lunch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, so we get some people sadly sitting at home. And before that scene can even get started, the jury's already back with their decision. So we rush back to the fucking courtroom. And the jury finds that, no, Emma is not a murderer. So the civil criminal restraining case order won't happen. <laughs> they found in favor of the Supreme Court still counting. I guess. Yes. Yeah. They were like, all right, precedent in the works in the weird criminal jury civil case. <laughs> <laughs> and she's driving home with her mom and her mom's like, She's like, all right, great. So I, I got you a 9 a.m. appointment to kill your baby tomorrow. And she's like, no, I'm going to keep the baby. And the mom's like, what? <laughs> but like, cool. You can fucking do that. Yeah. Everyone is fine with you keeping the baby. <laughs> well, no, look, let's be fair. There are plenty of mothers out there that if they're daughter really wanted to keep the baby she was pregnant with at, at 17 or whatever was she's still in high school there's plenty of moms that would be like mm, you know maybe we try to deprogram some of that religious bullshit they put in your head because you're really really better off getting an abortion here right yeah. so it's not like that's unrealistic but the way that they've established this mother at this point she might as well say no it's not about choice it's about murdering Baby. <laughs> I need my blood. It keeps me young. <laughs> and, 
the insane. The, okay, and then Emma's defense here, her little monologue about talking her mom into this. She's oh, like, "Well, God. I remember when we put checkers to sleep, and I had the fierce feeling of motherhood well up in me." And I'm just like, "Okay, so you, you, you it hurt. It was a sad day when you put your dog to sleep, and that's how you're coming to your decision." Hey, you know what? That's awesome. That is your dumbass right to choose. But that's the whole point, right? Yep. You get to choose. And then also, <laughs> how did they get this case done before the baby was born? <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm a year and a half into my divorce. Like, <laughs> Well, I don't know if you know this, but civil criminal restraining cases actually are very quick. They go very, very quickly. quick. They yeah, very the, expedient. They move through oh, the federal oh. municipal state courts very quickly. <laughs> ah, yeah. See, that's they didn't have time to order the desk really for the judge. <laughs> And they give away their whole game with that stupid dog argument, right? They're like, don't you remember when Winston died, his little puppy eyes closing? That's what being a mother is like. And again, I don't want to be the guy who's a parent and is like, you can't understand the love of a child because there's lots of love out there and there's no higher or lower love. But I will say, I have had a dog die and I have a hunch that if my son died, I wouldn't be like, yeah, same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking same. <laughs> <laughs> or you're just like, you know, if I keep this dog, I'm going to start drinking and I'll get into <laughs> jazz music. And... <laughs> but thank God for social worker Morales who talked me out of it. Yes. So I murdered the dog old yellow style, you know. Oh. All right. So then we, we cut to Ethan. He's sadly staring into the middle distance, thinking about that dead baby of his. But just then Emma shows up and she's decided that A, she won't kill the baby. B, she forgives him for suing her into slavery and C, she'd like to marry him after all. Okay, <laughs> but what's great is this movie is so dumbly shot that we just see her standing at the door smiling. So for a second, I was so hopeful she was just going to be like, ha ha, fucking got it. She pulls it out with her hand and smashes it with a little like nutcracker. It was like, ah. She got it in a jar, shaking it at him. She squishes it against the window. How do you like them apples? apples. <laughs> the How do you like squeaking against the way? How do you like them clumpus? How do you like them tonsils? Right. <laughs> and yeah, this just blows my mind. Hey, I still love you, even though you press criminal civil charges <laughs> against me. Really. What? Uh, Oh, they're all made up now. Oh, God. I got to say, the idea of her presenting the fetus to him, putting it in a little guillotine at the end, that's been that's more worth a fucking Kickstarter than anything we, else we've ever aspired to, mm. listeners. Mm. So just so you know, I can't imagine we couldn't get this actress to just refilm that one shot. We just cut it in. Nobody's the wiser. Nobody's the wiser. Well, that was the first ending, but they decided to do a rewrite, you know. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, so that is, we, we, Jesus Christ, they present a quote from Letter from a Birmingham Jail as though MLK was talking about fetuses when he said it. Mm hmm. Uh, and then they say, let's become Americans again. By which they mean <sighs> agreeing with them on abortion. Yeah. And then, like every single anti abortion movie we have ever watched, bar none, we end on some home videos of that lovely little baby that didn't get murdered after all. And the child is like three because that's how long the trial took. It, she, when she gave birth, yeah. the child was already three. <laughs> so. yeah. oh, they named it Presley. And I know I should never make fun of a name on our show because a lot of people listen and someone's going to be like, hey, man, I named my kid Kumquat Squish Squoosh. Yeah. What's wrong with that? But like, <laughs> come on, they might as well name it Oopsie. <laughs> <laughs> She's just swinging around on a mini stripper pole. Yep, that tracks. Yep. That tracks. <laughs> Her name is Presley Voodoo Carpenter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I got to say, AG, it's been a blast having you here today. If our listeners wanted to hear more from you, where should they go? Uh, yeah. Check me out on Twitter at Muller She Wrote. And we also are there at Daily Beans Pod. And then, of course, our new show with Andrew Torres from Opening Arguments is called Clean Up on Aisle 45. And that's on Twitter at Aisle 45 Pod. Awesome. And of course, we'll have that all linked on the show notes as well. And well, that does it for our review of The Order of Rights. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to lure you in for some more. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, it's Valentine's Day next week. And since most of our listeners can't 
go anywhere or do anything, we want to invite you to cuddle up with your honey and enjoy the fact that you're none of the people in the Christian dating documentary we'll be watching. Oh, God. A courtship. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, not Valentine's Day next week, but, uh, you know, wing it. It's, it'll, I'm sure it'll be fine. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 285 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to AG for hanging out. And perhaps even a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors to help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among the ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving us a five-star review and by sharing this show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing ADS Citation, Need and D&D Minus, and The Skeptic Crowd, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email Godawful Movies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slot and Evil Drafts on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, which was used for permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm no illusions promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Noah and Eli went on to owe me one. Yes, Emma went on to have a 50% chance of finishing high school by age 22, and Presley was significantly more likely to have health problems, do bad in school, and wind up incarcerated. Nobody in this movie wears a mask. No. No. All right. In Godland, we drink our coffee black. <laughs> That's right. Damn it. All right, sorry. What? Bulger's crystals. <laughs> <laughs> we just snort them, and then we fuck our sisters. That's oh. a reference to a Folgers commercial. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, I saw that commercial. Okay, Holy good. Shit. I was just. I, I keep forgetting this is the first time we've met, and so <laughs> you, a you lot want of to into, and then we fuck our sisters. <laughs> sexual tension between sis and bro and that fucking absolutely <laughs> all right so sorry i'm going back for that we'll, we'll we'll use that one as an outtake so let me go back to that the preceding podcast was a production of puzzle and a thunderstorm llc copyright 2021 all rights reserved